Okay, uh, this should be a placeholder for the intro. I'm doing hex head. Uh, you want to take a look at it? Hex head's neat. Hex head creates an animated character Hello, in Python. Hello, ask me a math question. There he is. Maybe I can start him again. Um, except he's going to start in a new spot. So let's ask him the math question first. Five times five. The answer is twenty-five. And that should do. Let's get started like we always do. Find Pi Stimulator on your desktop, double click it or right click and say execute. This is obviously something we're going to be making with the turtle module, so click on the turtle. After you click on the turtle, find the IDE icon and click on that. Clicking on the IDE opens up this dialog box that's already in the student folder. So all you have to do is double click on your name so you're inside. If you have separate folders for Python programming, whoop, click on that. And then go ahead and click on OK once you've directed it to the file folder you want to save the program in. After you click OK, you'll see this window open up for you. This is our little starter script, so just bring it over right beside your Pi Stimulator. Uh, the first challenge I'm going to give you is to make the window sized like this. So the sizing of this window is that it is, I'll just draw some arrows so you can reference it. Um, the sizing of the window is 480, so, so you can remember it, 480, that's an 8. 80 and this is 720. So find out where you think it would be that you would size that here and change the size of the window uh, just by changing the appropriate numbers in the script here. Okay, so the line you're looking for was this one, your screen setup line. Your 480, the width is actually already okay. The only number you had to change was 360. And we're gonna change that to 720 right now. And if we run it, you'll see that we do end up with a window sized just like the one we had in our example. So it fits right over it. So that's the answer for that. Every time you run the program, your Python shell here is gonna open. Just go ahead and close that after each run. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go to our student folder on the desktop, double click that, find your name and go into where you've got your Python programming. If it's not in the folder you're in right now, go into that folder. And what you're looking for is that Python tutorial you did where you wrote a program that could make shapes. Find it, here's mine here, I call it ShapeMaker. Uh, right click on it and open it inside of idle Python 3.5. So do that now, please. Now that we got that open, let's just move it on to over top of the one we're going to write. Um, and then click on run and then run module or just click F5. Uh, that'll start it up and let's bring it over. So what we want to do is draw those faces. So uh, I'll go ahead and stop here. You catch up to the position I'm at now so we can just draw this together. Okay, for the first step, let's just draw the hexagonal shape. So six sides, one, two, three, four, five, and six. So just do up to there, please. Okay, for our next feature, let's do the mouth shape. So go up to about mouth height and just come straight over. And want, we want to draw a nice, big, wide open mouth because this is when he's speaking. And come back to where you started. So just do that, please. Okay, let's draw an eye now. So let's follow up the outside border till we get to eye height and then shoot out and draw a prism or sideways square shape. And then inside that sideways square shape, come in a short distance and draw a second prism. And then follow your path back till you're on the outside edge again of the border. Okay, so now we just need the last eye, so we're gonna follow the border over the top, around the top of his head, till we get to about the same height that the eye's at. Then we'll shoot in and draw ourselves that prism shape. Do a line into the inside of that and draw a second prism shape. And then follow that path back 
to the outside edge and then follow the outside edge all the way along to where we were at that eye height of the first eye and that'll close it off so now we've got it done so do up to there and I'll take you to the next step okay so on this step uh, when we program this and you followed the programming you should have made s a key that you can hit on the keyboard that will bring up this what do you want to call your shape question and I want you to answer that with hex head one and hit enter now we've got a tricky step for you um, tricky in that it's something we've never done before I want you to ask your instructor for a highlighter or, or dry erase marker I should say or a pencil and I want you to make some marks on right on your screen because you can't draw on it like I can here with this uh, electronic pencil and you're gonna mark where you did your angles so when we redraw this for our animation we're gonna need a couple different drawings of this we will be able to uh, make them look somewhat the same right so I just need you to mark this one part of the mouth so the most important markings are the ones for the outside so the heads the same and then you can mark you can mark the eyes for their points there as well so uh, I'll stop this here I'll start it up again when I got it fully marked up but I think I have so we'll just stop here okay so now when this disappears I'll be I'll know that these outside marks are the border of the head except for this one where the mouse starts oh I should mark oh that's fine okay so now we're gonna hit D on the keyboard which deletes and we're gonna draw again so we're gonna draw again uh, but we're gonna connect those marks we made so he's gonna look somewhat the same so there's my outside edge I'll come to the height of where the mouth was go back to where the mouth ended but this time this mouth has to be different it's going to be an almost closed mouth so just a tiny opening go back to where we start so when we he talks he has that open to closed mouth kind of animation and then I can just connect these dots here that make up this eye I know that I didn't draw the pupils but I know I just go in a little bit and pupils move anyway so the fact that his pupils will move a little bit um, is gonna look pretty natural I'm gonna trace the outside edge I'm following the exact same steps we did for the first drawing so I'm not explaining them heavily you should be able to figure it out I think now I just have to go in and draw the inside prism pupil back to where I started follow the outside edge back to the original eye height to start this last drawing and I'm done I've got my second one so I'm gonna hit well I'll stop here you catch up okay so now we can uh, hit S that'll bring up a second question we're gonna save this one as hex head 2 we'll hit enter that'll save that and you do the same so now what I want you to do is go into your folder where you started shape maker or whatever you named it and find the text file that you're hiding your sprites in right click on it and open that and just make sure you have a hex head one and a hex head two if you don't give your instructor a call over for a little help okay so we uh, don't we can just close this one we can also close this and this because we're all done I'm just gonna clean up these things on my screen and you I'll ask you for this step to do the same clean up your screen okay so we don't need to run this anymore so go ahead and close this one so that's the step for this one uh, for this bit of slide so close this down and what you should have is the one we're working on now so uh, let's go on to the next step for that okay right under import turtle I'm gonna have you do another import and what you're gonna import is something called sub process so go ahead and type that in all right so the next thing I'm gonna have you do is we're gonna define the variables for hex head one and hex head two uh, so I'm just typing those in I'll do the equal sign here uh, and I'll do the equal sign here so my challenge for you is this 
You have defined and stored those lists that make up hex head one and hex head two. <clears throat> How are you going to use them in each of these lines to make sure that these hex head one and two variables contain that data? Go ahead and try and figure that out now. Okay, so the answer is a copy paste job, right? So you go to where you've got your stuff defined, open that up again. Um, you got hex head one, which is all of this data. It's a tuple, and we know it's a tuple because it's inside of these smooth brackets. And it's got a start and an end. So we're going to go all the way to its end. Copy that. So I got all the data that makes up hex head one. And I don't have it blended in hex head two with it. I just have the data that makes hex head one. I'm going to minimize that. Um, and then here for hex head one, I am just going to paste that in. And it's a huge amount of data. Uh, I'm sure glad we don't have to type it out. So go ahead and do that for your first one. And that will make this second challenge even easier. How are you going to do it for this second one? It would be the same thing, right? Okay, so hopefully you've already got this in here. Um, but let's open this up again. So when I said it's the same thing, I meant the same process. Not You're not copying and pasting the same thing. You're going to go to hex head 2. And you're going to go from its beginning to end. Copy that. And you're going to find where you said hex head 2. And you're going to paste that in. So there's your second answer. Okay, so here's your next challenge. I want to see if you can use... So I just clicked on turtle there. And I'll click on the shapes. And I'll click on add shape. And I want you to see the inf if you can use the information here by spinning your wheel to figure out how you're going to add these shape de definitions uh, to be included as the shapes that Python Turtle can use. See if you can give this a read and make it happen. So as you flip through, you'd see a lot of examples. This one's actually a pretty good one. Um, it shows you that uh, you've got a format here where you name your shape inside the quotation marks and then you have the tuple that defines the shape afterwards. So uh, we've already got uh, the tuple as a name here so we don't have to drop the whole tuple in. We could just drop the name. So let me show you what I mean if you haven't already figured it out yourself. So let's paste this in. So uh, screen add shape works. Um, we can keep the name hex head one and we can even use the variable which is all of this tuple here hex head one and then we want uh, we'll make the t1 our guy is t1 right not t2 so we'll make t1 into the shape of hex head one So go ahead and do those steps if you haven't already, and then we're going to run it after. Okay, let's run it and make sure we actually get something uh, that generates that little hex head character. And we did. He just showed up sideways, so we're going to take care of that too. So what I want you to do to try and take care of that sideways problem is click on the turtle, uh, click on uh, the motion one and take a look at set heading and see if by rolling your mouse wheel you get anything in here that might help you out um, for that problem. So hopefully you had a chance to spin this around and maybe played with a, a couple different ones uh, but what you should have found is that T1 set heading 90 which I'm just gonna put in there and run is all you need to fix the problem we ran into with our head being on its side. It'll now be standing up. So this line here is what added our new hex head shape into the available shapes that uh, we have. What I want you to do is copy paste this line and make the changes. So I'm just going to copy paste it right here. And I'm going to ask you to make the changes that are necessary so that we also add hex head 2 into the available shapes that we can use in Turtle Python. So that was a pretty easy challenge. Hopefully you've got this done already. You just take your hex head 1, change that to hex head 2 because that's simply the name we're giving it. And this variable, we want to become this variable here. 
and the only difference in that is one is a two. So now we've loaded up all the information for hex head two, and that's the end of that challenge. Here's another question. How, what would you change in this exis, existing code so that you could see what hex head two looks like rather than just the hex head one we're looking at when we start it now? Okay, so another easy question, really. Uh, T1 shape is when we're assigning what shape we want T1 to have. So if we simply change that to hex head two, then when we go up and run this, let me bring this over. There we go. Now we got the T hex head two shape with the closed mouth. Okay, so here's your next challenge, and I'm gonna uh, write it as a comment. So your challenge is to uh, create a, oh, let's make it a tuple of the words in this sentence. Go ahead and ask me a math question. Okay, so make a list, uh, sorry, a tuple uh, with each of these words separated within the tuple. Um, do that now. Okay, so here's the answer. First, <coughs> our tuple needs a name. So I'm going to name mine Say List with a capital L. And I'm going to say equal. Now what makes it a tuple is the smooth bracket. If it had a square bracket, it would be a list. But I'll use a smooth bracket. And inside that, I'm just going to break up uh, the words. So go, comma, ahead, comma, and, comma, ask, comma, me, oops, comma, a, comma, math, comma, question and no comma because that's the last one but a closing bracket so if you didn't get that go ahead and do it now you know what I'm changed my mind about the name because I didn't make a list I made a tuple so I'm gonna change the name to say tuple maybe you can do the same if you copied my name okay so for the next step I want you to drop down to one time commands and here I want you to create a for loop that's going to loop through and get each of those items from within the tuple. So it'll get go, then it'll get ahead, then it'll get and, then it'll get ask. It's actually really easy to do. I'll challenge you if you remember how to loop through a list with four or how to loop through a tuple with four. It's the same way for both. So here's the answer. Of course it starts with four. It's a four list. Then we give it a variable of some kind. Let's just make it V for variable, and then tell it what we're looking what we're looking into. Either are we looking into a range, are we looking into a list, are we looking into a tuple, and what what's the name of it? So then we'll just say, and of course it's going to have stuff indented under it, so we're going to end it in a colon. But that's it. This is going to loop through all the different items we have in say tuple, put them into the value of the variable v where we can use it for anything we want to underneath this for list. So go ahead and put this now if you don't have it already. So earlier I had you change this so we're showing the shape of him with his mouth closed. I want you to copy that. Oh darn, I think I erased it. But I want you to copy it and put it here but I want you to change that so now it's the character with his mouth open. Okay, so if what you did was a simple change in making this hex head two and change it into hex head one, you're right. This next line we're gonna do is nothing you've seen before. It's the reason we imported subprocess up here. This is what we're going to put here, and it is subprocess, what we imported, and dot p open which means process open. And eSpeak is another program altogether, a program you didn't even write. It's a program that allows these Linux computers to talk. But we're gonna tap in to the fact that that program 
is on our computer and we're going to use it within our Python program. It's actually a really cool, really powerful thing to be able to use other things other people have written to make your program more powerful. Um, go ahead and type this up as you see it. You might recognize this from some of our days when we were programming things for uh, the Pi, Raspberry Pi. This is a substitution. We are substituting a string into this spot and that string is going to be oopsie, it's going to be whatever V is, not I. So the V in our four uh, in, this, in the say tuple list that we're capturing is going to be said here because of the way we wrote this. If you have any questions on this or would like to explain how well you understand it, uh, just grab your instructor and tell them what you think you're reading here. Now before we go further in this um, thing, I want you to import the time module. So go ahead and show me that you can import uh, the time module and, and particularly we want to import the sleep. So from the time module I want you to import the sleep function. See if you can show me if you remember how to do that. Okay, so time module. I'll click on that, get the time options, and then we got this import one, right? So we'll click on that. We got to import it. When I want to import just one thing from the whole module, I'll use from time import. So we click on that. And then just roll your mouse wheel, and we'll see uh, from time import sleep. That's what we want. Uh, head over there, right click paste, and we're good to go. And we'll go on to the next challenge after this. Okay, move your cursor down. So it's under that sub-process line we just wrote. And then what I want you to do is make this program sleep for 0.2 seconds. See if you can remember how to put that code in. Okay, so if you want that, it's very simple. Sleep, and then of course it's going to have an open closing parenthesis because all functions do. And you'll just put 0.2 in there. That's it. So. What I want you to picture in your head is that this for loop is doing the process of saying this sentence. So it gets go, it opens his mouth, and it says go. So then after saying go, we need to close his mouth. So how would you close his mouth on this line here? Okay, so I could copy and paste this one in here and change it to hex head 2, but I already have what I need right here. So I'm going to copy that. Paste it, and we're all done. Now that he's closed his mouth, we need to make him sleep again. We need to make him slow down one more time. So show me you remember how to do that. So you didn't have to have a, to remember too far back. It was just when we did this. That's when we, uh, that's how we make it sleep again. Okay, let's go ahead and make it run. Hopefully I can be quick enough because I'm on a two monitor screen Go and I have to and ask me a math question. There, right, you saw a bit of it, but it's working. Hopefully you'll see it better on your screen. So now that you've seen it work, I want you to call your instructor over and tell him how this for loop is working with this tuple of the broken up uh, sentence that he's saying in order to make it look like the animation is speaking to us word by word. Okay, so here's a different kind of challenge. I am going to have you copy this whole thing and just paste it underneath. And then right here, I want you to give say tuple some different values inside here that um, make up a new sentence. And see if you can make them say something else. Okay, so hopefully you had time to play with a couple different sentences. And you might have noticed that it actually is better to break up two syllable words into their syllables. And then the mouth moves a little more realistically. So enter has two syllables. So I broke it into ent and er. So now what I want you to do is just change this to say please enter a number at the prompt. So now that you've had him say please enter a number at the prompt. I want you to give him an in, give the user an input prompt uh, that they can actually use to put in a number. Okay, so if you weren't quite remembering that, an input prompt looks like this. So here's first num is just a variable name we're giving it, and then you just say input, right? And then in quotations the string you want to say to prompt for the prompt, 
And then maybe what we should do, give a little space here so that the prompt uh, doesn't appear right at the end of the R. So something like that. Now here, I want you to ask for a second number and make his mouth move for that using the same technique we used above. Copy pastings allowed. Okay, so here's what you want to do. We're going to copy and paste this whole thing. Copy. We're going to paste it in. And But instead of please enter a number, we're going to say please enter sec and let's see how that looks. Second, uh, please enter, oh, that sounds like bad grammar. So we'll say ah, second number at the prompt and everything should work good here but we have to move this down so go ahead and do that as I've done it if you haven't already okay now that we said there'd be a second prompt I want you to create the second prompt so our second prompt is going to be just like our first one but we're going to change our variable to second num and of course we're going to say that it's the second number we're asking for so go ahead and do those steps okay so now i got a challenge for you uh, and i wrote it down right here so now that you have first number and second number multiply them together and store them as a variable called math answer so you're going to have something that starts with like this math and sir equals how are you going to finish that sentence that coding sentence, I guess. Okay, so it really would have made sense if you did first num times, and of course we use the, the mark that's above the eight, the asterisk, um, as multiplication in coding. So what would have made sense if you did something that looked like this, first num times second num. But remember, when you're taking input, you're collecting them as strings, not numbers. So that's not going to work because you can't actually multiply strings. So you have to turn those strings into integers and you do that with the int function. So this is what it should look like. And then you'll end up with the result of whatever your first number was and your second number. So go ahead and make those changes if you haven't already. Now that you've got an answer, I'm going to give you a new say tuple. So say tuple this time is going to be something like this. Uh, the and sir, spell drawing, but it'll sound right, is. And then since math answer is a variable, we're not going to put it inside quotation marks because actually if we was inside quotation marks, it would just say math answer. It wouldn't say the actual math answer. <laughs> but it's still not going to work because now we have the reverse problem we had before. Now this is an integer and we need to make it into a string in order for it to work with eSpeak. So we do that with str. int converts a string into an integer. str converts an integer into a string. So go ahead and type something like that. Okay, so here is the final challenge for you. Um, I'm going to leave you with this one without giving you the answer because you should be able to figure it out. If not, your instructor's right there, so don't worry about asking them. Uh, go ahead and make the uh, program uh, say, say this. And um, there's a particularly interesting challenge. If your answer, your math answer, is long, see if you can figure out how the little mouth keeps talking for the entire length of the answer.